So I ended the last video um, labeling this first argument modus ponens. That's the name of the form. If you notice what the form looks like, if we try to be a little bit more formal about what it what what it what's actually going on here, is you'll notice this sentence: the Democrats are going to stick with their middle of the road platform is repeated twice. What we can do is we can just substitute in a letter. And that stands for that sentence, that independent clause. We'll say A equals the Democrats are going to stick to their middle of the road platform. And we'll call B, they won't excite voters. So what's being asserted in premise one is if A, then B. And you can see then premise two simply asserts A and then the conclusion is B. So the key to understanding what's happening in modus ponens is to understand that when we have a conditional like this, it's asserting that every single time that A occurs, B also occurs. And then premise two asserts that A does occur. So then our conclusion B must follow. Now let's apply that exact same thinking to a slightly different kind of argument. Here, we have the following argument. If killing puppies is wrong, then killing pigs is wrong. Killing pigs is not wrong. Therefore, killing puppies is not wrong. Now I've intentionally chosen uh, something that uh, might rub you the wrong way to show that we're not re really interested at this point in whether any of these premises are true. What we're interested in is whether, assuming the premises are true, the conclusion must also be true. So again, we think about this as we assume this is true, we assume this is true, and then ask, does this have to follow? Let's go back to our understanding of conditionals that we uh, hashed out during the last problem. What we have is if killing puppies is wrong, then killing pigs is wrong. So we'll just say, what's the pattern? The pattern is if here we need something to stand in for killing puppies is wrong, we'll say you. Then killing pigs is wrong, then I. So again, I want to define my sentence letters. So what's being asserted is, is if U is true, then I must also be true. Then premise two, asserts it's not the case that I, not I, killing pigs is not wrong. So it's not the case that killing pigs is wrong would be another way to say that, or in shorthand, simply not I. And again, I stands for killing pigs is uh, not wrong. I'm um, sorry, killing, I stands for killing pigs is wrong, right? So that's what we defined it as here. Killing pigs is wrong. So P2 is asserting that I is not the case. And then our conclusion says U is not the case. So again, we have to be careful here. Really think through what a conditional is asserting then. A conditional is asserting if U is true, then I has to be true. But what that tells us is that if I is not true, then you couldn't possibly be true. Why not? Well, because this says every single time this is true, this is also true. So we know if this ends up being false, if I ends up being false, that is, if not I ends up being true, then you also has to be false. So again, we get that this is valid. And again, this pattern is so common, we have a name for it. It's called modus tollens.
one more way to understand what's happening with these conditionals. Conditionals assert necessary and sufficient conditions about their parts. Specifically, in the conditional, if, if killing puppies is wrong, then killing pigs is wrong, what's being asserted? The following is being asserted. This means This means that, so if killing puppy, puppies is wrong, then killing pigs is wrong. This sentence asserts the following, that the killing of pigs being wrong is necessary to killing puppies being wrong. So another way to think about this, it asserts that killing pigs being wrong, that is the killing of pigs being wrong, is a necessary condition for killing puppies being wrong. Or we could put it this way, to be wrong. And that's what all conditionals assert. All conditionals, or at least for our purposes anyway, the conditionals we're gonna be concerned with assert that the consequence, so that's the part after the then, is necessary to the antecedent. They also assert that the antecedent is sufficient to bring about the, the consequent. So it asserts that killing puppies is wrong, is sufficient for killing pigs being wrong. In other words, to put this in abstract terms, conditionals assert that killing puppies being wrong is sufficient for killing pigs being wrong. Um, sorry, that's the specific. So to put it in uh, abstract terms, conditionals in general assert that the, what is it called? The antecedent is sufficient for the consequent. So again, let me stop here. Here we have, we've now gone through in these two videos, two different uh, valid argument forms, that is modus ponens and modus tollens, but both of them depend on you understanding what a conditional actually says. Conditionals assert necessary and sufficient conditions about their parts. Here's a summary of that. 